Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Splits with me, Fujit. Hey, let's talk about the new tier 10 Japanese heavy, the Type 71. But before I get into that, I want to get real for a little bit. I mean, this is the tank there, it's, it's a beautiful tank. Now, no doubt there have already been numerous videos hitting the internet on this thing, and no doubt some of them are saying it's broken. <laughs> Because it's the usual run of the mill, to be honest with you. I mean, the usual thing that comes out is it's a broken tank, or it's an OP tank, or it's this or that. As the content creators scramble around to get those videos out and to get those views up, and to attempt to convince the player base that certain tanks are either broken or OP. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you about the tank. And you are going to make your own mind up. Because at the end of the day, it's you that play the tank. And it has to therefore fit your playstyle and your skill level. Don't be misled by these It's Broken reviews. And don't start thinking that because some YouTuber said X, it will somehow change your skill level or your ability to win games. Because, and I hate to tell you this, it won't. There is more to winning a game than rolling out in a so-called broken tank. And it is disingenuous to suggest otherwise. So with that little caveat out of the way, let's have a look at this new Japanese heavy. Now, this is it here. This is the Type 71. And I'll be honest with you, it's a lovely tank. It really is. I like it. And I didn't like it when I tested it. I thought it was a little bit... Mm. Now, it's not realistically uh, a super heavy it's not in the same vein as the 60tp or the e100 or the vk72 the is4 etc etc it's it's that borderline heavy on you know a mix between a, a medium and a heavy now we're gonna have a look at it compared to some tanks and we're also gonna have a look at its armor profile so let's let's have a look at the tank compare first so here we are in tank compare and what i've tried to do i've tried to pick tanks that it's it's closer to because as i said it's not a super heavy it's not e100 mouse you know, vk 60 t 60 tp type tank it's not dishing out that massive alpha damage and it hasn't got that you know massive hit point pull so it's more of a heavy um. So what I've done, I've picked the WZ113, the 215B, the E5, and just for good measure, I've thrown in an IS-7. Now, straight off the bat, you can see here that the DPM of the Type 71 is not as good as the 215B or the 113. Well, that's not surprising, to be honest with you, because it's pretty difficult to get the same sort of DPM as those tanks. I mean, those the, the 215B has got some of the best DPM in the game, and the 113 has also for a heavy. I mean, the, the 113's got 3,439. I mean, that's just obscene. But it does beat the IS-7, which is closer to a super heavy, although with its uh, enhanced uh, speed nowadays, it, it's, it, it plays like a heavy. And the E5. So, you know, I mean, the E5, bless it, it it's struggling nowadays. So the DPM is, is not bad for the Type 71. 2,849. But don't remember, but forget don't, don't forget this. DPM, okay, damage per minute, is if you land every single shot, every single time, and do the top alpha. So don't be, again, misled. DPM is the best case scenario. We then come down to penetration. Now, as you can see here, the penetration is the same as the 113. It's not as good as the E5, the 215B, and the 260. So it is struggling a little bit with its penetration, not gonna lie, but it's manageable. Then we come down to its alpha damage. This thing is not churning out massive amounts of damage. It's not a super heavy, like I say. So, you know, it's not knocking out that 600 type roll that you're getting with the likes of the E100, the VK72, and the 60TP. It's knocking out 400, less than the WZ113, but the same as the E5 and the 215B. So it puts it in that lower category. Its rate of fire is, is better than the E5 because obviously its DPM is better, but it's not as good as the others because obviously their DPM is better. Reload time is just shy of eight and a half seconds, which is about right 
realistically for a Heavium. Calibre is 120, that is the same as the 215B and the E5. Now look at the aim time. The aim time isn't that great. Okay, It's better than the IS-7, but it's not as good as the other three. Two and a half seconds. I mean, that's quite a long time for a Heavium. Dispersion, well, the dispersion again is not great. Remember what dispersion is. It's that aim and reticle and the shell gets to move. I mean, 0 0.344 is actually quite hefty. Look at the IS-7. I mean, that's a super heavy, a bigger, like, bigger damage, 460, and it's got, you know, a bigger gun at 130 caliber. So that's quite big dispersion for this gun on this tank. Now, we've then got the depression. Now, okay, it's a bit of a mixed bag, this one. It's got seven degrees, but you can stick in a special consumable, that well, special equipment slot, and that will increase. And we'll get to that later. But it's the same as the 215B, which, remember, the 215B is a rear-mounted turret. It's better also, sorry, it's the same as the 215B, but it's better than the 113, but the 113 is always struggled with depression. Moving down, well, it's pretty fast. I mean, 40 kilometers an hour, that's slower than the IS-7, slower than the 113, but clearly it's, it's faster than the E5 and the 215B. The engine power is pretty funky as well. I mean, it's pretty nice. And its power to weight ratio isn't that bad. It's not as good as the IS-7 and it's not as good as the 113 or the E5, but it's not bad, okay? Camo profile actually, however, is terrible. 5% um, while still, 3% while moving, 1% after it's shot. I mean, look at all the other tanks. On the move, all the other tanks are like pushing 8 to 12%. This thing's pushing 5%. I mean, that, that is not good. We don't know anything about the credit coefficiency at this moment in time. Hit points, well, it's got more hit points than the other heaviums in its class. I mean, the IS-7 there is, is pushing more to the super heavy contingent. But uh, whilst it's got those hit points, look at its armor. I mean, the armor on the turret is not as good as the 113 or the 215B. Admittedly, it is similar to the E5, but the hull armor is not as good. Um, frontally, frontally, you know, the E5 beats it. Okay, it does beat the 113 and the 215B, but they've always struggled with frontal armor. And at the moment, it's got a 61% win rate, mainly because there's only 567 players playing it, and it's a new tank, so people don't know at this moment in time how to combat it. So now let's have a look at that armor profile. So here's the tank facing off against an IS-7. And as you can see, frontally, well, it's not as red as you would think. I mean, the hatches, well, you can pen those and you're gonna go through 100, 237 millimeters, that's 100% straight in. It's also got these little cheeky bits here that, okay, admittedly, it's a good shot to get that. It's got the turret ring, admittedly, again, it's a good shot. And it's got the bottom hull, which again, you know, if you're, if you're clever enough, you're not gonna be showing that to anybody. Majority of the time, you know, frontally, it's pretty, pretty hardcore. It's like, what about sign on? Well, is it a good side scraper? Well, it, it will, but that turret then comes into play. I mean, don't forget, if you've got the wall in the right place and you side scrape him properly, you're not gonna hit that turret. So the armor, is not bad to be perfectly honest with you it's pretty troll to an extent i mean side on you're going to pen it for every day and the rear you're going to pen it as well armor wise it's a nice tank you're going to get those troll bounces to be perfectly honest with you if you stick it in the right space however you know a, a well-timed and i've seen this with the japanese heavies all of them are pretty pretty funkily armored but if you stick in your your you know your premium ammunition then things change and then it ain't looking as as red as it would and you will find this a lot more people are going to start using premium ammunition against these things because why wouldn't you next off i want to talk about the equipment because this comes with funky donkey equipment firstly it's got this it's got the ability to increase on that gun depression. Now, Blitzstar says it's seven degrees. That's actually six degrees. And if you stick this in, you get nine degrees of depression. And that's throughout the entire game. And you get 17 going up. But as I said in the Type 68 video, you are sacrificing mobility for that. 
Now, if you stick in the improved suspension, then okay, you're not getting much kilometers an hour, but your terrain crossing ability goes up significantly, and so does your haul turn rate. And that shouldn't be underestimated because depending on which equipment you have depends on which type of tank you've got. Now, if you're one of those players, like I said in the Type 68 video, that loves to play the ridge lights, then of course you're gonna want that better gun depression. Don't forget, it's a tank that has got really good frontal armor, um, apart from that bottom plate. So it would make sense to play it on the ridges, but you then become a bit slower and you're not able to turn as quickly. But if you're one of those players who like to sort of have mobility around the battlefield and you're not too fussed about your gun depression, then you are going to use your improved suspension. And believe me, it makes a big difference. You know, the, tra the tank characteristics change quite substantially. So just be mindful of that. Here we are in Dynasty's Pill. So we're going to look at how the tank actually plays. And I think I had on this game the, um, the suspension loaded rather than the gun depression which we're going to see how that pans out already you can see you're getting a decent turn of speed but you do sacrifice that for gun depression now side on the girl's going to take me and he hits me for 684 but i get a nice shot into him thing is is that the new aim system or is that me and that's still out to debate so i don't know but uh you know this thing doesn't struggle to pen that much it struggles to pen when you play shots like that I like the tank. I, I don't think it's OP. I certainly don't think it's broken. Uh, in the hands of very good players, it's going to be a nice tank, and they're going to really ex excel in it. But they'll excel in most tanks. But in the in the hands of the average player from the player base, it actually isn't going to play that easy. Because, as I say, it is, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a heavy, um, realistically, it has slightly more armor than your normal average everyday avium and it's got those hit points but you know for all intents and purposes it's a heavium one thing it does have though is a very nice he roll when it wants to so we've already knocked out 1400 damage we've we you know bounced 900 we haven't taken any kills so we're doing okay simple as that um i found the gun a bit bouncy i don't know where that shot went it went somewhere it went probably into um rockfield i don't know but I like the tank. I, I think the tank's nice. And I'm certainly not a believer that it's broken OP or anything of the sort. It is new. And people don't know how to play against it just yet. And once they do figure it out, once they do work out how to play against this thing, then you're going to see a different type of tank. You know, it, I'll, I'll be interested to see if people come back then and say, oh, it's so broken. Because I don't think they will say that. Simple. That's why I very rarely say tanks are broken or whatever. I mean, look at him. I mean, he's pinned me with his. Uh, he's pinned me nicely there. I'm going to chase him down and try and sort of take him out of the game. Get a, get a roll there, but hey. And the thing is, you know, we're, we're, we're losing this game, to be honest with you. I mean, it's not going to take much longer. I mean, uh, we're going to chase the Leo one down, round the corner, take him out. Um, it's still three. Well, no, it's now three against two. That, that sort of went south quickly for them, didn't it? And now it's three against one. You know, I kind of went a bit mad. And it's the one two one be invincible that's left. So the tank itself is not shabby. It's not amazingly broken. It's 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 a strong tank in the right position, and it's a strong tank if you play it nicely and you play it well. But to say it's not balanced. To say it's broken, to say it's OP, is is just stretching it. And I really, really, really want to sort of, you know, appeal to you guys. Don't be fooled by this. Okay? You've got to play this tank. And it may not suit your playstyle. It may not suit the way you play. So just remember that. Because it may not. Now, I'll be honest with you. I tested this tank. And I, I actually didn't get on with it that well in test. I found there were a few things that are a little bit mm, and it has changed since then. Um, it went through a couple of test cycles, to be honest with you, and I actually think this is more balanced than what it was. Now the thing is, a lot of the time in Blitz, you need to have an obliging enemy. Now Araho Ri has already said that we're going to lose. Uh, forget him, because we do have an obliging enemy, and this tank 
is a nice tank. And if you understand the strategies and the gameplays around tier 10, you can have fun in it. You know, it's dishing out pretty decent damage for a, for a heavy um. Uh, although, is it really a heavy um? I think it is. It's got a relatively longish reload for a heavy um, but nothing that you can't deal with. And it has really nice armor. But you can't just throw this thing to the wind and hope for the best. Because you will get smacked. Okay, it's not impenetrable. It's not got the quickest turn of speed. It's got 40 kilometers an hour, which is beautiful, don't get me wrong. But it's not as quick as the Leo, and it's not as quick as the 113. It hasn't got the DPM of the 113. You know, it has, it's got the same penetration as the 113, but it's got better armor. Not gonna lie, and here we go here. If you angle it nicely, you get to bounce. And this is what I'm trying to do against this girl. And there we go again, 640. So I've bounced 1,600, That's, I've bounced more than I've actually dished out, which I don't mind. Now I'm gonna try and push onto the grill and the Leo. And all the time I'm, I'm mindful of my plates. And there you go, the Leo hits my top plate on the hull. And he's not able to pen me. Again, he's not able to pen me. But is that my amazing skill? Or is that his lack of skill in that situation? And I'd hate to say that because a lot of it depends on what you're facing and who you're facing and how they play. I mean, I don't know if this guy is a super duper unicorn or a relatively new player in the tier. And it would be wrong of me to say, yes, the tank showed its superior skill there against that Leo One driver because he may not be, you know, a skilled player. I don't know. What I do know is at the end of the day, this tank is no worse than, say, the IS-7. It's no better than the IS-7. I mean, if you if you want to truly look at a tank that has got the dominance in Tier 10 at the moment, then the IS-7 beats hands down this thing. And I'd take the IS-7 over this thing any day of the week, to be honest with you. Why? Because this is new. And once people have worked out where to hit it, where to pen it, and how to play against it, it'll be a completely different tank that i assure you now i've knocked out 2.3k here i've bounced 2.7 again i've bounced more than i've knocked out again it, that doesn't make the tank broken it really doesn't it just means my enemies have been more obliging than i would like to think and it's making me feel good because they've obliged <laughs> simple as that i mean this is7 flanked round and completely you know, he's a, he's a heavy, and he, he completely ignored his entire team that went the other way. So that's the only reason he's still left in the game. And I, I've lost a lot of hit points here. Didn't pen the side of the IS-7, but then again, he didn't pen me. Is that my tank, or is that his skill level? I don't know. And this is what I keep saying, guys. You yourself have to come to the conclusions of whether this tank is, is broken or not you're the one who has to play it okay now it may be great that all these super duper unicum youtubers are telling you it's broken it's this it's that their skill level is different to yours they play different games to you they see things differently to you so don't be blinkered to this make your own mind up oh we get a first class there we knock out 3.4k damage we do okay that was the first game in it by the way um that was my first game when it came out so i'm quite happy with that but it, does that mean it's broken? No, it just means we had a good game. That's my take on the Type 71. It's a nice tank, but it's not broken. And by the way, in that last game, that uh, Leo driver was a 44% win rate player. He played to his ability level. So is it the tank or is it the player? Well, unfortunately in that situation, it was the player. But he was their top damage. So, you know, he did what he could to his skills. And this is the thing you've got to remember. I mean, I like the tank because it's new and it's something different. And no doubt I will play it until the tracks fall off um, just to have a bit of fun in it. But as the player base adapts to getting used to the profile of this tank and how this tank actually operates, you are going to see a slight domination of these things on the battlefield. But that doesn't mean to say it's a broken tank. It doesn't mean to say it's OP. It's just something different. And, you know, a lot of people are making a big noise about this aiming mechanic as well. So, 
take all these things into account, it's a tech pre tank. So if you've got the free XP or you're grinding your way to it, you're getting this tank for free. Uh, but don't be fooled into thinking that it is somehow going to improve your gameplay or it's going to improve your skill level or it's going to make you win more games. Because that's just nonsense. And it really bugs me when people keep talking about tanks are OP or tanks are broken. The tanks are strong. It, this is a strong tank. But personally, I don't think it's broken. And I certainly don't think it's OP. Is it balanced? I don't know. But, um, you know, it, it would be difficult for me to take these three games to tell you that, yeah, 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 it's perfectly balanced. Anyway, I've been Fujit. By all means, I mean, I want to hear your comments and everything below because that has been the Type 71. And whilst it's a nice tank, whilst it appears to be strong, it's new and people don't know how to play against it yet. My view may change once the player base gets used to it and it settles down. I may find out that it is slightly broken and it needs slight tinkering. But when I compare this tank to the likes of the IS-7, well, the opinion's out. Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujit, that has been Type 71. I'm waiting to hear your comments on this um, as I say because at the end of the day it's your views that matter not mine I can just give you an overview how you play the tank how you get on with the tank how you find the tank it's completely up to you okay so make your own minds up guys and until the next time stay safe out there have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about having fun and being happy